yoga morning let's talk let's reflect let's process and get ready today i'm going to church you know i've been going through some things haven't we all been going through some things and let's just talk about it let's break it all down let's explain if you've been here for a while then you know that many years ago i used to serve on the worship team at my local church here in houston i grew up in church like a lot of us did but i was forced to go <laughs> you know how that goes i didn't have a relationship with christ i was going because i had to go or else i'd be yelled at i don't think my mom would have beat me but just the yelling was uncomfortable so I had to go and I would just sit and uh, girl, please think about God knows what, right? So when I came to Houston, I, like a lot of people, was going through way too much and just felt like something needs to change. Something needs to give. So I knew that I felt a tug on my heart. In fact, we were at an Easter service at church and I felt a tug on my heart and I was like, I need to give my life to Christ. And I told this story in a different video, but I feel like it's one of those videos that is mad old that I actually <laughs> took down, unlisted, blocked something on my page. This is a very old video. So we're going to just touch on it a little bit. Mind you, I cornrowed my hair today for, and then I slicked back my edges. I will put on my wig in a video but we're family so no need to dress this up we're, we're talking you feel me and i felt the tug in my heart i gave my life to christ that day now i was in full ornament decorations you feel me dressed up to go to church and i remember in the past whenever they would do it's a call it's not called communion what is it called this is make forever hd skin espresso what is it called oh my gosh whatever where you they call you down for you to be baptized baptism duh right but i i wanted to call it something different but clearly there's no different name that i'm aware of and i'd be thinking dang if you came to church today and you were all dressed up not expecting to be dumped into water what what do people do now this is my exact shade not those darker shades that you're making work this is my exact winter shade, excuse me. And this looks so good. So I used to be like, dang, what do people do, yo? They just be having their wig on and everything. Like, yo, this is serious. I was thinking vanity wise, oh, this is just insane. I mean, the day that I decide to give my life to Christ, I gotta make sure I come here prepared. I don't, you know, I didn't even understand it. But on this particular day, many years ago, I felt such a strong pull. I could not say, oh, I'll just do this another time. It needed to happen that day. And it was an Easter Sunday that year. So just imagine. You just get dressed in your best, right? And make up all that. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is just not the best time. But I could not stop crying and I knew it needed to happen. Now, thankfully, I didn't realize this, but in the back, they got the bathrooms all ready. They've got a bag for you to put your stuff in. They got hair, shower caps. They had disposable slippers. I mean, they had everything you can think of. And I literally was like, oh, thank God. Because I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then I was like, yo, do I take off my wig? Because you know how they dip you back and bring you forward. It was just all these things. I knew that I needed to get it done. But realistically, I was just like, yo, how am I gonna walk out there? Like, am I going out there like this? You feel me? What, what are we doing right now? What are we doing and how are we doing it? I was like, you know what? I don't care. This is just between me and God. It is gonna be what it's just going freaking be and that's just gonna be that on that so i was nervous i was excited i just knew that it needed to happen so i go into one of the stalls i change they give you a they gave me a t-shirt and, and a pair of shorts like a random pair of shorts and then i just went into the stall and changed and i said you know what wig no wig wig no wig and it wasn't it wasn't a swimming cap this is the sephora best skin ever concealer 50n it wasn't a swimming cap that's gonna stay on your head and i just knew that this shower cap was gonna come right off right when i when i went back and came forward and i said you know what screw this thankfully i didn't do any glue down type wig situations so i just said you know what bump this like we're all here giving our lives to christ it doesn't matter how you look you know i mean i had already been crying crying so the makeup was already a done the done deal so i went to the sink and you know there were a lot of people in the bathroom and people were being very encouraging they had get um not guests they had volunteers helping us and things and it was very nice it's the beauty blender and i said you know what screw this i just washed off my face with literally the pump soap that was in the wall of the bathroom i just washed my face with that pump soap i did the best that i could and i don't think i had lotion did they have lotion there? i'm not sure they might have and then i put on the t-shirt i put on the shorts i put on the disposable slippers and i walked outside and well into the hallway where there was a holding area and they take your information they gave you a certificate and they're excited and they're talking to you and praying for you and all this stuff and then there was a woman who prayed for me and i was just still crying 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 and then it was time to go outside and it wasn't a big thing there were so many swimming pools for people to be baptized in there were so many i mean it was there's a lot going on think of it it's easter sunday okay and it was my turn and my family was there and it all happened so fast they didn't even know that i was gonna go down i just felt that tug so strong 
strong that I just went. So they finally found me in time for me to be dipped, right? And that happened and you know, you get back up from the water and woo! And all of that, but I was still so emotional and just frozen and just, I don't even know. It's a lot, because again, I have been feeling the tug and then resisting it. I kept thinking, girl, I'm not about to go do How about my wig in the water? But that day, oh, I couldn't resist it anymore. So that happened. And from then I was like, okay, wow, we're, we're on this walk right now. So I can't remember if that was after I joined the worship team at church. I can't remember. It had to be around the same time. It might've been after that, that I joined. I don't know. But I, I had gone to the volunteer training at church and I was on the volunteer team. Cause at that time you had to volunteer in a different department before you got into the worship team. And maybe that was because they wanted to make sure that folks who were joining the worship team were had genuine interest in serving the Lord and his people and not just being on stage. That's what I remember telling myself was the reason. Cause I'm thinking, oh, okay. So I began volunteering in the children's church and honey, <laughs> I love children with all my heart. <laughs> my child is my greatest blessing, answer prayer, okay? But other people's children, and you gotta be politically correct and stuff? Nah, son. So that was just too much of a challenge for me. This is the LYS bronzer in the shade Worthy Deep. That was a huge challenge. I mean, I did that for what, a year and a half? That was enough for me. I did a lot, okay? I did a lot. During that time, I believe, or maybe at the end of that time, I got on the worship team and I had to do an audition. I was so stinking scared. I was so afraid. I've always sung at home. I would do talent shows in college. I mean, you know what I'm saying, like just whooping mic nights, that kind of thing. And I always knew that I had a talent to sing. I remember literally listening to the What's the Form One album from Mary J. Blige and writing down every single word from my tape play. I know how that was back in the day. Those of you who get it, get it. And I started singing. No one else in my family sings but me. Everyone always asks me that. No, God just knew and made it available to me and I just started singing. So I have never sang in church before, okay? This is my first time and I thought, I really wanna do this. I mean, it looks fun, it looks cool and why not sing for Jesus, right? When I was younger, I wanted to be a singer, like on stage singing, you know, for the masses, not about Christ. But then I said, this would be really nice to do that, right? Really nice. I wasn't looking at it as ushering people into a posture of worship before listening to the word of God. That's not, I didn't know anything about that. So that wasn't my posture. But of course, through all the trainings and meetings and things, I knew that that had to be the posture when on the platform. But even just in general, serving at church, okay? So I was a newly saved Christian. I had been volunteering in the children's department. I had been a part of different groups where we would meet moms and different things. And I, I felt really plugged into the church. It was great. I was new and I will admit, and I've mentioned this in a few other videos where I've ch chatted about my faith. I became very by the book in the way that I looked at Christianity. And I recognized afterward that perhaps we all go through that, I don't know. But I didn't realize that I was so by the book until years in. I would see things and come into the knowing of things that I would, would make me question and say, hold on a second, these people have been doing this, being a Christian, being in the church, worshiping, serving for a long time. Why is this happening? It was so confusing for me. Because I, as a new Christian, was like, I thought everything has to be, you know, granted, granted, granted. I have my own struggles at home, but I expected more from seasoned Christians because I'm like, oh, they've been doing this for a long time. You know, I'm, of course I'm new, so I have to figure all of this out. Years later, I was like, okay. The majority of people really ain't by the book like that, like that, like that. Okay, so that was a revelation that I had to come into and of course recognizing that my walk was mine and I'm not in charge of anyone else's walk and also just mama business, you feel me? So that was that, <laughs> very shocking for me, but, uh, but I was learning, right? So like I said, I was on the worship team and volunteering and just involved in the whole thing, very gung-ho, very all of that. And I was leading worship on the platform and you had to, we signed this, this what, like decoration or something, basically agreeing to, I'm trying to remember everything, so that's my words, are, my words are sparse. Basically agreeing to a certain lifestyle that we would live, right? And that I felt was, I wouldn't say that it was strict, but it was, it was clear that you had to be different, you feel me? And it's understandable as well. And of course, all the while, I am a content creator on social. And I just remember feeling like, oh, you know, of course I began posting a lot about Christ, about being saved. I post a lot about it. It was very fresh and it was very excited, all of that. And people would be so enamored by it, excited by it, encouraged by it 
right? Which I thought was fantastic as well. All the women would comment about how my faith was encouraging them to be bold about their faith and so forth. Glowish, luminous, medium, tan 06. All links are below, by the way. And it would always fuel me, of course, and I didn't mind. I remember there was a time where I lost a lot of my audience because of what I was posting. I mean, I wasn't a radical Christian, but I was posting my faith and I would lose people. But of course I would gain people so it, it just was what it was and it didn't bother me, right? So now COVID comes and everyone is at home. Now I remember feeling a little disconnected from the worship experience and the team and, and had been voicing some concerns and then COVID hit, right? So everyone's at home at this point. And that threw a monkey wrench into everything. I'm sure not just for me, but for everybody when it came to serving at church. I felt extremely disconnected. Now, mind you, new Christian to all of this, and I was very involved. Worship nights, volunteering, all that stuff. So it was easy to be connected and to try my best to walk in this new life that I had. I'm not saying that I was doing 3 a.m. worship services every day in my life and I wasn't swearing anymore and I wasn't whatever. Like, come on, you feel me? It's a walk. You understand what I'm saying? The sanctification is a walk, and I had to learn that too. The accountability was there. The fellowship was there. The camaraderie. It was it was helpful for me, especially being a new Christian, but I recognize that it's just helpful in general. Walk with people of the same mind, life, goals, all of that, whether it's Christian, Christianity, whether it's entrepreneurship, anything, right? When all that was taken away because of COVID, it really shocked the system. So then I was like, okay, I'm watching online. Okay, like what, what, what's going on here, right? And I was doing my best to stay plugged in. We would have meetings on Zoom, that type of thing, but it was still a challenge. But then I started to think about what Christianity meant to me and think about it outside of the worship team, outside of the connections that I made at church, because now I had to figure this out on my own as a woman. And I won't lie, part of me was like, how am I supposed to do this? You know, do I want to do this? Because I was doing it and because it's a personal journey. I was doing it on my own. So that's one part of it. And then I'm like, Am I going to church because of people? This is Sephora Micro Smooth 85. Am I enjoying the experience? Am I volunteering? Am I so connected because of the people that I'm around? Or is it truly because of my relationship with God the Father? I had to work through that because I was very connected to the people. Yes, I had a relationship with Christ, but I was very connected to the people. And like I said, I had come across some things that made me question Christianity, question Christians, like, what? I thought that we wouldn't do stuff like that. I thought that this wouldn't be a thing. Not like someone's struggling with something and they know and then they're saying that they're, no, I was coming across stuff like, oh, okay, so y'all be doing, oh, hmm? And it was not like they were open conversations. So it was very, very confusing for me. So during that time of the isolation, I had to think through a lot, right? Okay, so now church is back in service. What, a two years later or a year and a half later and you go, and, but it was very just different. People had changed. I mean, the people, not only on the worship team, but in the church, had changed, understandably so, migrated. And I had to recognize that all the people that I had felt attached to, or the majority of the people that I had felt attached to, were gone. So the team was different, the church was different, honey, the pastor was different, it was a different location. And I'm like, wait a minute, everything is different over here. And I remember even the pastor of that location, I felt like didn't really know who I was because it was small enough where there were times before the service where we would pray, the worship team would pray with the pastor and go up on the stage, you know, the usual people. And I still felt like he just looked over me or looked through me, didn't actually know who I was, but I would always block it out because I felt seen by my bandmates or what do you call them? Fellow worship members, okay? So that didn't bother me too much. But then when I came back and then there was a whole nother pastor and uh, I mean, it felt like a whole new place and I know that it wasn't just me I was just like hold on a second it felt like I had to start back from square one and it was just a very disconcerting uneasy feeling and then I again had to process am I here because of the people because that's what it's giving admittedly and I had to realize that when the people were gone <laughs> I was like, oh, now what do I do? Okay, now what do I do? So of course, like I mentioned, being on social media, I was posting the way I was posting, but I also would feel restricted. Let's say I wanted to wear something that was sexy because I'm a grown woman and I don't want to feel like a grandma. I'd feel like, oh dang, you know, we don't have these church folks watching. Like, it's not like anyone would say anything to me. Nobody would ever do that, but I just felt like, ooh, 
this is just, you know, let's say I wanted to wear a midriff or a bikini. I mean, at that point, I hadn't gotten my procedure done. So, I mean, I would still wear stuff because I, I, I had gotten to a point where I began to embrace my body because it's what I had. And I was going through so many transitions. I had decided that I was going to embrace what I had at the moment and not hide. So, you know, I was still dressing up and all of that stuff. I had been on keto and I was trying to do all the things. But I did feel like, dang, you know, I mean? got all these church folks following me. like, blah, blah. You know, and I just felt that burden there. And then, of course, that, that agreement that we signed live like Christ. And I forget what else it said, right? So I was like, dang it. But anyway, this is, this is COVID stuff had changed and I had gone back to church and I had served on the team maybe two times. And I remember it was not comfortable for me. I felt invisible. The worship leader or the, the main person, I forget the name, the title had changed. Some of the members who would sing with us and the, well, when I was there, were there, you know, like one or two, but it was so different. The way that we did things was so, I felt so disjointed and I was like, oh no, I can't do this. And I had to come to terms. I felt better serving at church, but I had to come to terms that I also don't want to be invisible. It's important to feel connected. I recognized that that is really what helped me is to stay connected, to have the accountability to have the the people to be able to talk to, pray with, so forth. And because it, everything was so new and because it didn't seem like there was a space for connections to be made, it didn't seem like it on those two or three times that I served. I was like, bump this, okay? Because this is not somewhere where I have to be. Perhaps I need to deepen my connection in the faith in another way. Because I had already been working on that by going to church virtually. And now I thought maybe I can go back in, on the team and then have that connection. I said, you know what, mm -mm, I'm not gonna force it, especially if it doesn't seem like that's what they're trying to do. It, it really felt like they were trying to just get the ball rolling and just, it felt like business had to be done as opposed to let's reinforce these connections again, let's connect. And that was a hard pill to swallow, I won't lie, because I felt like it was home for me. It felt like home, it, 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 oh man, it's just, it's wild. It's wild and I recognize how much the connection to the team helped and hindered me. You feel me? And I'm explaining all of this because I've seen the comments of people asking, oh, do you still go to church? I miss your church content and this and that. And I had to come to the realization that I'm a Christian whether or not I post specifically about it. I'm a Christian whether or not I post worshiping on the platform. I'm a Christian whether or not my caption is speaking to Christ. Even in this conversation, you know that I'm a Christian. I'm doing a whole video about it. It's more subtle now, whereas before, it was very much more forward facing. And I'm comfortable with it being either way. It certainly speaks to the journey that I've gone through in my Christianity. That really is what it speaks to. And I'm okay with that. And then another monkey in the wrench was thrown. And this one is one that I would have never been able to predict. And it made me rethink Christianity as well. Honey, I was here doing my bootleg virtual church and I got an email from the church. And I haven't mentioned the church, by the way, but I might as well mention it now that I'm going to talk about the actual scandal because that's on Google. It's so, so terrible. Hope City. Okay. And I get this email and I go open it up and it's a video accompanied with some words. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's like an important message for the, for the, what, whatever, congregation. Girl, I don't know. And I open it up and I was dumbfounded. Again, not plugged in. I don't know what is going on, but when I looked at this video, basically in a nutshell, honey, the pastor had left the church and he was in an extramarital affair and there was gonna be a new pastor and a wife in town, which had been, they've been, they had already been there, whatever. So they were gonna be the interim and girl, I don't even know. I could not stomach it because we all know that marriage is extremely challenging. If you're married, then you get it. So I remember just getting prayed for, sitting at the edge of my seat for the marriage series because I get how challenging it is, getting prayed for and all of these things. And I just, I just, I just could not imagine. I mean, he would do this series every summer about marriage and talk about his marriage and what they'd been through. I mean, it was a whole intentional thing. So I was sitting on the edge of my seat trying to just for answer prayers to get a breakthrough, all the things, right? And just to find out that, what, two years prior or one year prior, I forget how long it had been, but he was in an extramarital affair. I'm just telling you that it was so unbelievable for me. Granted, I was not in a position where I was close to him. I had seen him in, in real life, maybe arm's distance once or twice, just walking in or walking out of a door. So I didn't know him. 
You feel me? The people who had worked closely to him, those who were on staff or volunteers and had to hire up positions, I'm sure it was much more devastating for them. Of course, for his family, it was increasingly more devastating for them, ex exorbitantly more devastating for them. So I can't compare. That does not compare. So then I went down this rabbit hole of, just like everybody else, I mean, admittedly, trying to figure out what happened. It was all over social, YouTube videos popping up left and right. As months went by, more was discovered. This is the Huda Beauty Warm Matte Obsessions palette. And I just could not believe it. Again, look at my lens. A new Christian in Christ, serving at church, very green to everything, hopeful, just thinking the best. And like I said, I had come across some things just from being on the worship team that I was like, just shocked about, like I said. And then now this, I was like, oh, the whole thing is just, oh, the whole thing is just a game. The whole thing is just fake. It, what, what's going on here? What is this Christianity thing? I knew I believed in Christ. I wasn't saying that I was now going to not be a believer. I was just like, this whole church thing's a lie. Everyone's lying. Everyone's lying. And cause for me, huh, listen, when I would go in and whether or not I talked about my marriage or I talked about my life, I talked about my upbringing, my struggles, what have you, you better believe. I was keeping it a thousand and I would always say to them I don't know how y'all do this but if I'm telling the story we gotta just go right to go right to the juggle I mean we gotta we, we gotta keep it a hundred you feel me and they would appreciate that because I'd be like I don't know how y'all doing this I don't know how y'all doing it <laughs> how y'all how, how you know when it came to anything relationships forgiveness work parenthood Christianity letting go of past traumas the whole nine yards I would just be like what in the world so back to what I was saying that connection with some of the members on the worship team was so meaningful for me because I needed that connection. I needed that handhold. I needed to walk on a journey with someone or some people because it just, it just helped. You feel me? The, the fellowship is just, a, it's a, I learned a huge part of the walk. Okay. So fast forward back to the situation with pastor. I was just so shook by that. I'm like, this whole thing is a lie. This whole thing is a lie. Everything's a lie. Everything's a lie. So what am I even doing here? And now I'm like, what? Wait, so what church am I going to go to? What am I going to do now? You know, what's going on? We're already doing this bootleg virtual church. What now? You feel me? It was just so devastating for me. I just could not believe it. And the more I learned online, I just could not believe it. So obviously for a while, I was like, I'm not going back to that church. But then I'm like, but now where do I go? Because that is what I had known for what? I had it been five years? No, I don't remember. Maybe four or so years. So I'm like, but now where do I go? Who wants to start all over again like that? because I felt so at home. Huh. So I hadn't gone back <laughs> after that happened because I thought, oh, this is terrible and it's embarrassing. I'm talking for myself. I'm sure other people felt lots of different ways and it wasn't just me. But I'm like, this is even embarrassing. I don't even want to be sitting anywhere and say, oh yeah, I go to, I go to, you know, Hope City. <laughs> so I had to walk through that like, dang, now what? And I was already disconnected from going. Like I said, people had changed, people had switched. This was just all kind of stuff going on. So it wasn't like I was in contact with people, but I knew that I was like, okay, I need to re-strategize. What am I doing here? But of course I was just doing my best to have my own relationship with Christ, my own routines that I would do on my own at home. You feel me? Because it is a personal relationship. I kept being reminded of that. It's not a community relationship. And again, it was like, okay, am I here for the people? What is going on here? I can't be here just for the people. You feel me? There had been some time where I was trying to figure out, okay, now what? You feel what I'm saying? And then I had a tug on my heart to go back to visit the church and just see, okay? So I went back and I visited one time and I ran across one of the worship team members who was still there and we talked literally for an hour about everything and I'm always candid and she knows it and I was like, yo, what the hell's going on here? And we we connected on the fact that, yeah, this is actually very terrible, terrible all around, especially for the family and the children, you feel what I'm saying? So it was a whole thing and I was like, telling her, I, I told her basically all this stuff. I mean, and she had, she was one of the people who would pray for me. So she knew a lot anyway, but I told her about how I had been disconnected, displaced, just all this stuff. And she was encouraging me to return. But I, I expressed to her my hesitance because even when I did return that time, it, the disconnect, it just didn't feel all, it, I just felt like, why am I here? Like I'm not here to sing, right? We had to always have the posture that we're here to worship, to 
help people prepare their hearts for the word of God. I'm not here to perform, right? I perform in my kitchen, in my living room, in my bathroom, I perform, <laughs> but I'm not on the platform to perform, you feel me? So I was like, I don't wanna just be, you know, and she knew that, but she's like, you know, pray about it, this and that. And I was like, okay. And I, I never went back after that. I went to visit that one time and I never went back after that. Well, recently I'm like, ah, I need to get in person. You know what I'm saying? I recognize the difference when you're just watching online because you could easily just not watch. Oh, I'll catch it tomorrow. I'll stream it tonight. I'll do this and then it don't happen. You feel me? And I really enjoy not only the worship portion of church, but the connection. And then of course, I like to just go. I need to just like get there. Just go somewhere to a brick and mortar location. This is why I'm getting ready right now to go in person for the second time in what? <laughs> three years almost four years can you imagine for the second time in four years and it's a big deal it's a big deal i'm excited about it and that's why i wanted to go through this long story to explain because like i said i've seen the comments i recognize that there's been a change but there's a reason and i also recognize that this is a journey and it's a personal one so similar to how i was in error in holding people that I knew from the church in a high regard, I want you to know that you should not hold me to that standard either. You feel what I'm saying? We have expectations of people. You look at their track record and you have a sense of what they will and will not do, but you also don't ever know. <laughs> like the shocker of the extramarital affair that I talked about, it just shocked the whole system. It shocked the whole entire system, you feel me? But I'm going today and I'm excited about it and we'll see. I'm not committing to serving again. I'm not committing to any of that. I just need to walk this walk for myself and just see. And that's what's important. Ooh, this is the iconic, I've done this look before too. We were here chatting, not talking about makeup. I iconic London Smoky Eye Duo Kajal. This is the shade, oh, I have no idea. Ooh. There is no name on here. Oh, here it is on the bottom. I'm so annoyed. Juniper Green. Juniper Green, honey. I would encourage you, if you don't already, to let the media that you see online be supplemental to what you do on your own, to what you foster at home on your own, what you have fostered at church on your own. Don't let someone else's content be primary you feel me it shouldn't even be secondary maybe it should be in third place you feel what i'm saying because people are walking their own walk i'm walking my own walk the way that my life is now is very different in a lot of ways from what it was years ago so uh it's just important that we do that and i've had to learn that too i'm not gonna hang my hat on what someone does and doesn't do okay because i've had to learn that lesson in a lot of ways over the past several years. And it's just best that way. People are all walking their own walk, okay? This eyeshadow is so creamy that, cause I'm looking up when I close my eyes, it's like, ooh, sticking together. While my lashes cure, I'm gonna use my Old Faithful Sephora Collection number 26 lip stain, girl. Ooh, every time I get to my lips, I'm reminded if I have not highlighted my face because right here is supposed to be shiny. Okay, so let's do that after I put this on, because I already started, because that is an important step. We gotta hurry up because the lippy needs to go on to blend to this brown. Okay, milk makeup, highlighter, the shade is lit on my finger right here and then right here. But it's hard to go over twice because I don't want to pick up any of the lippy. Okay, cleaning my hand and taking some. This is so creamy and good right here. So then when I put my head up, you see a little bit of shine, okay? And then the lip stain in the color 66. 75 is also good. This is really light, which I love. So sometimes I do the 75 and 66 or just, just either of them. But it needs to blend with the brown. If the brown dries and then you do this, it won't blend so seamlessly, you see? Look at that, subtle, right? Like right in the middle. I love a good ombre. Now you can do a gloss on top, but I'm not trying to have my hair stick into my lips. Gloss is great when my hair is pulled back and a slick down. I don't want sticky lips, sticky hair. This is ridiculous. So here are my Old Faithful Lashes, all products linked below. And let's just throw these on. Wait, are they ready? <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> do my inner eye wow you be forgetting stuff okay i'll do my inner eye when i finish because i can't let this get messed up i 
place it down the middle. I press the outer part and then I make sure that the inner part is here. Press it down. It should feel a little bit cold. I could use my fingers because I have no lashes on, but I love using this Revlon half curler and just get up in there, pinch your lash and the lash together okay and if i have to I twist it up so that the end of the lash is not going down that be happening to me sometimes i know thank you so much i open up your eyes and get up in here and this gets real close i mean real close okay then i check because sometimes they be like er. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, and do key. And then we're gonna use Huda One Coat Mascara on the bottom because it's so good. Either that or Fancy. Mm, Moncom has a good one too, but that's not in this makeup case. Okay, here we are getting ready. I chose to wear all brown because I love a good brown nude look. I've had these boots for a while. This jumpsuit is from Amazon. I threw on this cream coat over it to break up the color a little bit. I was recording audio, but it didn't record. I love this white Kate Spade carry trunk. I'll link the outfit below. And thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.